What about a scenario where in order to make the assumptions of a simple linear regression as true as possible, we've logged both x and y? So if our scales are the log of x and the log of y, only then are linearity and homoscedasticity assumptions met, and we fit some line. Again, if we're comfortable interpreting x on the log scale and interpreting y on the log scale, we could just stop here, right? Suppose that this is um, number of years employed, and this is um, income, so maybe this is log years and log income. We could stop and say, when the log number of years, when the log number of years you've been employed goes up by one, the mean of the log income goes up by some quantity beta 1. That's perfectly fine if you're comfortable with log years and log income. But I'm usually not. I'm usually not comfortable on the log scale. So let's see what we can do. So here's the equation implied by the picture I drew over there. That the mean of the log of y given the log of x is equal to some intercept beta 0 plus some slope beta 1 times the log of x. There's our equation. And we're going to use the ideas that we developed when we were logging only y or logging only x. And let's start with this idea that we can't just think about what happens when we add 1 or add some number to x. We can't just think about what happens um, when x is equal to 3 versus x is equal to 4. Because that plus 1 is going to get stuck in the log. So instead, we're going to talk about what happens when we multiply x by some number. For example, when we multiply x by k. So first, let's write this down. We have the mean of the log of y, given that the log of x is equal to the log of 3, say. And this says that's equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times the log of 3. And now above that, we'll write down the same thing, but where we've multiplied 3 by some number, k. The mean of the log of y, given that the log of x is equal to the log of 3k, in other words, x is equal to 3k, is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times the log of 3 times k. All right. So now I'm going to subtract the two left sides and subtract the two right sides. So what do I have? I have the mean of the log of y given that the log of x is equal to the log of 3 times k minus the mean of the log of y when the log of x is just equal to the log of 3. Okay. That whole thing is equal to beta 0 minus beta 0 is 0, beta 1 log 3k minus beta 1 log 3. And we showed previously that beta 1 log 3k minus beta 1 log 3 is just beta 1 log of k. So we've simplified the right side following what we did when we had logged only x. Next, we're going to simplify the left side using the principles that we used when we had logged only y. The mean of the log of y, given a particular value of x or log of x, is approximately equal to the median of the log of y for a particular value of x or log of x if the log transformation did its job, if we have successfully set up a scenario where um, the log y's are normally distributed for any particular value of x. So I can substitute the word median in either of these places. And we now know that when I have the median of the log, I can just as easily write the log of the median, and that will be valid, because the median of the log is equal to the log of the median. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this left side in that way. What I really have here is the log of the median of y, given that the log of x is equal to the log of 3k minus the log of the median of y, given that the log of x is equal to the log of 3. And this whole thing is equal to beta 1 log of k. 
but now we're again back to a familiar place. The log of something minus the log of something else is equal to the log of that ratio. So I can take this left side and simplify it further. I can write that the log of the ratio of medians, the median of y, given, and at this stage I'm going to simplify this. Instead of writing the log of x equals the log of 3k, I'm just going to write x equals 3k divided by the median of y given, and at this stage, instead of writing log of x equals log of 3, I'm just going to write x equals 3. It's the same thing. Is equal to beta 1 log k. I'm almost done. I'm almost rid of the logs. Before I exponentiate each side, before I take e to the left side is equal to e to the right side, I want to use another one of these log rules to simplify this side over here. Beta 1 log of k is equal to what? In other words, b log of a is equal to what? Recall that some quantity times the log of another quantity is equal to the log of the second quantity raised to that first quantity. Okay, so I can take the beta 1 log of k, and that's equal to log of k to the beta 1 by the basic rules of logs. And now I'm going to exponentiate both sides. e to the this whole thing is equal to e to the this whole thing. In both cases, I've got e to the log, and in both cases, they're going to cancel. So I can just erase that, just like I can erase this. Let me just move this over. What does this say? The ratio of the medians of y when x is multiplied by k is equal to k raised to the power beta 1. Another way to say the same thing would be to multiply both sides by this denominator. The median of y when x is equal to 3 times k is equal to the median of y when x is just equal to 3 times k2 some value, beta 1. And for any particular scenario, this is a fairly simple statement because we'll pick some k, like 2. We're going to find out what happens to y when x is doubled. Okay, so k is equal to 2 because we're going to look at 3 compared to 3 times 2. Beta 1 is our estimate of the slope when both x and y are on the log scale. So we have an estimate of this number. So we have something like 2 and we have some number here, like 17, and we can take 2 to the 17. Then what this says is that when x is doubled, the median of y multiplied by 2 to the 17, whatever that number is. Because we can choose k and because we have an estimate of beta 1, this thing here is just some number. So now we have an estimate of what we multiply the median of y by when something happens to x, when x is multiplied by a particular value. And we have an interval for beta 1. We don't just have an estimate of the slope when x and y are both on the log scale. We also have upper and lower bounds for a 95% confidence interval. And so we can take k, whatever we choose, some number, to the power whatever the lower bound is. And we can take k raised to the power, whatever the upper bound is. And now we have lower and upper bounds for this quantity here. And we can say that we're 95% sure that the amount by which the median of y is multiplied by when x is multiplied by k falls in some particular range.